oops, see what I did on Ron's trains and things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Have you ever had a scene on your layout that just wasn't quite what you wanted it to be? Maybe you've got a scene like that on your layout right now. A scene that somehow when you look at it, it just doesn't quite fit what you thought your vision for that scene was. You just seem to think every time you see it, I wish it was different. And maybe you're struggling with the balance between the desire to tear it out and build it anew the way you want it to look, and the fear of what will happen when you start tearing into your layout. Well, I had a scene exactly like that. I've never been particularly happy with it from the very time that I got the scenic forms over it. And I have been thinking for years, I wish it was different. Well, I finally went and did something about it. Today, I'm going to show you how I tore that scene out and modified it to make it more like what I had envisioned when I first planned the layout. Do you have a scene like that on your layout? Are you struggling with that decision of whether or not to tear it out and do it again? If so, tell me about it in the comments section down below. Well, I'm going to take you over to the layout now and show you exactly what I did with this scene and how I think it really improved this particular part of my layout. This area right here is the area that I want to change on my layout. And let me describe this area to you just a little bit. Uh, this section uh, was supposed to be a transition between my Colorado mountain scenery to my left. You can see this mountain over here to the side and my uh, North Texas flatland scenery, which is to the right. Uh, this is, here happens to be the Wichita River, and just beyond that is Wichita Falls. Um, the interesting thing and, and interesting challenge about this partic particular section of my layout is you'll notice the very, very low ceiling here. This is very close to the ceiling. This isn't the regular ceiling of my basement. Uh, my basement has seven foot ceilings, but this section here, just about the width of the camera at the moment, uh, there is an, a return air plenum for my air conditioning system that runs right through here. So I'm very limited in space here, and it also makes lighting this section uh, a real challenge. But I had intended to use this area as a transition and make kind of some low hills here as they would then lead fairly quickly into the uh, Colorado mountain section. And I had always wanted to have this church scene. This in, in the background you see up here is actually a Z scale church. And those are some Z scale cars that are parked around it. And my intention uh, ultimately when this scene is complete is to have a cemetery and actually have a funeral ongoing at that uh, church uh, whenever the scene is all completed. The problem was uh, that church, uh, all that area, sits on a board, and that was the first thing that I did, was put that board in, and then I built all the scenery around it. But I installed the board way too high. Uh, this doesn't look like a rolling hill. This looks more like you're in the edge of the mountains. Uh, plus, when you look at the w Wichita River here, you see I've, I've got this huge, you know, straight up and down nearly bluff here, which is not what I wanted. I, I want to have a... Uh, rocky cliff uh, along the river on this side, but just up about this high, uh, and then this needs to roll off. Now, I, I like the, the foreground uh, scenery here, uh, the tracks, uh, this ridge here, I, I put in intentionally with this valley behind it, uh, because I plan to use that also as some forced perspective to make it look like there's some you know, created distance between uh, this ridge and that next hill. Uh, my idea is then to plant trees so that this scene with the church, Z-scale, forced perspective, you're going to see it just over the tops of the trees. And I'll use some smaller trees there to make them look distant. just going to try to create that kind of forced perspective here. But I need to lower this scene down, and I need to bring it down about three inches, uh, about this much. And uh, so uh, to bring my board down this low, I'm going to have to cut my hill down even further. Uh, so what I plan to do is I come in about here and, and cut this section of this hill out 
right along that line. And then where this mountain comes down, right at the bottom of that valley, I think, is where I'm going to cut this part out uh, down the same way. And uh, we'll bring those over together. And then, of course, uh, along the side over here above the Wichita River, we'll do the same. That will actually allow me to put my rocky bluff in here and then round that hill back. And in fact, I think I actually will cut this out uh, a little bit lower, um, coming up something like this and then straight back along there. So that's what I'm going to be doing to start with today. And uh, then we'll be coming back and reinstalling some, some new scenery base in this area. Before I start cutting, uh, this of course is on the upper deck of my layout. So before I start cutting here, I'm gonna have to come down here on the lower deck of my layout, and I'm going to have to move uh, this uh, structure here and this mock-up that I have of uh, Victory Blue Fuels. And uh, of course, all these cars, uh, I think I can just shove down to the end of the yard. And I'm gonna put a drop cloth over this so I don't just fill this with plaster and mess when I go to cutting out. So I'm going to clean this area out and then we will start uh, removing some scenery. I'm ready to start doing my cutting. And as you can see, as I, I made this mark on camera earlier, I, I knew where I wanted to cut this side. I decided it'd be gonna be a lot easier just to cut this straight around here. Uh, it's still gonna be fine. I could have put my hill up in here somewhere and I've got plenty of room then to work with new scenery. And yet it's still well above what I, I know that I wanna keep here. Um, I've kind of rounded this off, but I'm actually gonna cut that square and I've got a reason for that, and I'll show you that a little bit later. My kind of go-to tools when it comes to doing cutting like this um, is a, a hacksaw blade. Uh, this is not in the saw. It's just an old blade that I have used for just these kinds of purposes for years. Um, and then also, I have a, a linoleum knife here uh, that will be handy as well. What I'm actually cutting through, I don't think I said that before, this, of course, is plaster, plaster of Paris on top. Underneath that is a layer of uh, shop towels, paper towels, but the kind of commercial, industrial paper towels. And then, of course, underneath that is cardboard lattice, and I need to cut through all of that as cleanly as I can. So I'm going to come in with my hacksaw first, and uh, we're just going to try to get lined up level here and just start making a cut. The neater I make this as I cut it, the easier my life will be later when it comes to putting in the new scenery. Um, now I wanna cut into the corner here until I get all the way through, and then I could poke my saw through and then cut just one direction or the other. There, I'm, I'm through there, as you can see. And let's just start cutting along here. Got that side cut back. We're going to try to cut along the top of this bluff of the river. The lattice that uh, all of this is supported by is actually hot glued to the backdrop, and I didn't say this earlier, but obviously I'm gonna to have to do some serious repainting on the backdrop in this area. I needed to anyway, uh, you can see here, I had made some marks uh, on the backdrop and and it's been scuffed here. I, I kind of had changed my mind at one point about how this was gonna work. But anyway, I'm gonna to have to do some real reworking of the backdrop, I know that. But I think I can should be able to just kind of pull this out now and hopefully pull it right loose from the backdrop and there we have it um, a hill for sale piece of the texas colorado and western anybody want to make a bid no just kidding 
Okay, and you can see here the board that I had put in for this piece of scenery. And uh, this board is literally just screwed up here with a couple of screws. And so I'm gonna take that loose and I actually have a completely different plan for how I'm gonna go back with this. Uh, so I'll show you that in, uh, in just a bit. Um, I had forgotten from when I built this, but after I cut the top of this hill out, uh, I realized that I actually had used a piece of foam on edge here. This uh, section here is a, is a piece of inch and a half foam, uh, which actually turned out to be a, a happy incident because I'm planning to go back with foam where I had cut this out. And so I came back, uh, I'd cut this out about a half an inch taller than this, but since I had that foam there and it was nice and level, I cut the rest of this back to match the height of that foam because uh, that's going to actually work out really good. Once you get it started, that hot glue comes off really well. It was hot glued to the paint, so it's peeling the paint off of the masonite, the hardboard. But uh, still, it's, I think that's going to clean up pretty well. I think I can repaint that fine. Where that screw was, I'm going to need to sand that just a little bit. Now, for replacing this hill, uh, filling this hole in, I, I had some uh, inch and a half extruded foam on hand, and uh, I've cut this piece first that is 18 inches wide, uh, 10 inches deep, and uh, I'm going to put it in here just like so. I'm going to glue it right to this piece of foam. I'm going to hot glue it the best I can to this existing scenery. I can reach up underneath and kind of push that scenery up into it to get the hot glue to stick good. I'm gonna hot glue it right back to the backdrop uh, like the other was. And uh, then I've got uh, a couple more pieces that I've cut here to fill in um, this piece of hill down here. Actually, I think, yeah, I want to go like that. And uh, once I get those in, I can come back and carve those to shape. Now that I have my foam all glued into place, of course, we're going to start uh, doing some carving on that here in just a moment. Uh, but I just want to get a sense of how the new scene is going to, to work. Uh, these will be carved down so that uh, they will make the arm of, of this mountain kind of flowing down into this hill. This will be rounded down into this, rounded into this. This flat area in here then is where my church will sit. Uh, like so. And uh, the nice thing about this is it's a Z scale. So again, I've got that forced perspective, but it also sits further out from the backdrop than it did before, which will allow me to actually plant some trees and uh, do some things to create some distance behind it, uh, as well as create the scene with my church and my cemetery. So um, anyway, I think that's going to work out really well. Now, we're going to do the part that uh, is both a lot of fun uh, and really creative and really, really messy. And that is we're going to start carving this foam into the shape that it needs to be. I've got several tools here that I can use for that. Uh, again, I still have my hacksaw blade that I used before. Uh, that can, can be handy for, for this job. I, I have uh, my linoleum knife, which is what I'm going to start with uh, on this project. I also have some carving tools. I have a wood rasp, and uh, the nice thing about this is if you're carving any kind of valley types of things, it's uh, flat on one side and uh, it is convex on the other, so it can make a nice curved uh, cut. And uh, I have a, a Stanley Sureform tool, which is great for sanding down a lot of foam very, very quickly. So 
I'm going to start uh, working uh, at, at, at flowing this together and rounding this off and see what we can uh, what we can create here, what we can turn this into. a couple things off camera that I want to tell you about. Uh, I wanted to work in this area uh, in this rock outcropping before I put on my my, my next layer of, of ground cover and so I molded a rock casting with hydrocal plaster using a Woodland Scenics rubber mold. I started by spraying the mold with a little bit of wet water to serve as a release agent and then mixed up an appropriate amount of hydrocal to with a thickness of a, about a thin milkshake, poured it in the mold and let it set. Uh, check it periodically to feel the temperature. Uh, when it is warm, you know that it is setting up and, and getting uh, getting firm. When it just begins to cool down is usually when I like to take the mold off of them. I try to turn the mold wrong side out as much as possible so as not to break off any of the delicate detail on the rock. Um, but I'd like to do it at this stage because if it sets much longer, it gets very hard to get out of the mold and you can leave a, a lot of plaster in the mold. And if you don't get that out, uh, it can really destroy the mold, mold over time as it destroys some of the detail. So I took that rock casting, which I have right here, and I brought it in and set it in place like this. And when I did, I realized that the hill uh, up above here was still, I still had a lot of vertical surface uh, above this, almost half an inch. So I came back and, and made a mark kind of along the top of this. And uh, then I came back and carved some more off of this hill. Now I'm going to install this, this rock casting. And I'm going to install it using just plain old latex caulk. And uh, I'm going to start by putting... Uh, some caulk on the back. I want to put a lot of caulk on here, uh, a good liberal amount, uh, because the rock casting, the back of it, is not perfectly consistent, um, and it, 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 won't, uh, it won't lay really flat against that uh, piece of foam. Putting a lot of caulk in there will allow it to fill that surface and make good contact not only with the rock casting, but also with the foam, and um, then it'll get uh, good adhesion. I'm going to set it in place here. I'm just going to squeeze it in the best I can. And what I like to do is I like to get it in place and push it in. And then I like to pull it back off just to make sure that it is. Yeah, and it's making really good adhesion all over. Uh, so I'm going to push it back on there. And uh, I'm going to hold this for just a minute or so. And then I'm probably going to take... I've got this block of wood that I took off the wall earlier, 
and I think I'll just use it as um, kind of a prop just like that uh, to help hold that in place and uh, I'm gonna let that caulk dry for probably an hour or so if I was going to be doing a lot of work on this where I was going to be really you know pushing and shoving on it a lot I'd let it sit even longer uh, but for what I'm going to be doing I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour and I think it will be solid enough to be able to go ahead with our next steps the adhesive on my rock casting has had about an hour and a half to set up. I'm going to keep it braced there because I don't want to take any chances of knocking it off. Uh, but I'm going to start covering uh, this ground area that I have, have done now. And I'm going to be covering it uh, with some more ground goop. Now, I made a video uh, just a few weeks ago about how I make ground goop. Uh, I made this a little bit different than I did in the video. I noticed the ground goop that I spread in that video uh, the vermiculite, once it dried, made a pretty rough texture for N-Scale. Uh, so in this batch, I'm experimenting. I didn't use any vermiculite, but I used double the amount of celluclay, making this basically a paper mache kind of a, a product. Also, you'll notice it's a little uh, lighter tan color. I just used the tan paint. I didn't mix the paint. Uh, that's more the color that I want in my Texas area anyway. And so... Um, that'll make a good transition right here. And so I'm going to cover all of this area uh, with ground goop, and I'm especially gonna use it in some of these areas where these transitions, um, where there's some gaps and holes, I wanna fill those in good, and just make a nice layer on here. Now, I, I didn't mention, but I'm going to now, uh, this transition between the old scenery that kind of broke up a little bit and the foam, uh, it was, had some to, uh, give to it. So I took a strip of cardboard. Uh, you couldn't see this. I couldn't get the video there because it was under the layout. But I took a, a strip of, of cardboard and uh, folded it and stuck it under there and hot glued it all the way along here just to give that a little more rigidity. Uh, and now I'm, I'm going to spread some ground goop. And like I did before, I'm just going to get it on here with my hands to begin with. And uh, I'm just going to start spreading it on. Now I'm going to stay away from like my rock casting at the moment, I don't want to, uh, don't want to mess that up. Uh, and I'm gonna put a layer about, about an eighth of an inch thick over all of this. Um, I'm gonna kind of get down in here, and I hope you can see this on the camera, my hands aren't too much in the way. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of work it up into those holes. And I'm gonna come all the way down over this area where some of this plaster, uh, from the previous version of the scenery is, is kind of broken up. Uh, this will, will get hard over that, and that'll help shore up uh, some of that plaster and help strengthen it a little bit. And there, I think you begin to get the idea. I'm going to keep working this over and smoothing this out. And here is the scenery base replaced in this area that I've been working today. And I've got the ground goop on and I've got it fairly smooth. Uh, it'll require a little bit of sanding once it is dry, but uh, I think it's going to look really, really good. I like the improvement that I've been able to make to the scene. You can see up along the backdrop just how tall the uh, the hill was before way too tall and um, now it's lowered down and the ground group is wet so I'm not going to set it in but you can see how the church is going to fit into the scene allow me to put some trees back behind it and uh, of course also over here on the river side I've got that rock casting in and that's going to blend together much much better than what I had before so I think once I get trees and some other scenic materials on here, 
This is going to look really, really fantastic. I've always been excited about this scene, and I'm even more excited about it now than I have been for a long time. I am already much happier with this particular scene on my layout, and I know that as I get ground cover and other scenery materials on it, as I get that church in place and get that scene built, it's going to look much more like I had envisioned. I think I'm going to be much happier with it now that I've done this particular project. So if you have a project scene that you're not particularly happy with, I want to encourage you to maybe think about tearing that scene out and redoing it. I mean, what do you have to lose other than a scene that you don't like? And what do you have to gain? A scene that you love. It may become your very favorite scene on the whole layout. This is a hobby, so don't be afraid to try things, adjust things, do things over to make them the way you really want them to be. Well, if you enjoyed this video today, here's a link to some more videos that I know you'll enjoy as well. Be sure and check out that description down below where you'll find links to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, my Patreon page, and links to connect with me on social media. I hope you'll join me again next Tuesday and every Tuesday as I'll be bringing you more great model railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?